Hey everyone, I'm Jensen. It is Tuesday, October 13th, and from day two of Senate hearings for Judge Amy Coney Barrett to a look ahead at Ohio's winter as we continue to fight coronavirus, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But before we dive too deep into any of that, I wanna get you all up to speed on the latest coronavirus data from the state. So today there were 1,447 new cases of coronavirus compared to the 21 day average of 1,227. There were 12 new deaths compared to the 21 day average of 18, 123 new hospitalizations compared to 79, and 13 new ICU admissions compared to that 21 day average of 11. DeWine said that as testing increases, the hope is to see a drop in positivity, but right now that's not exactly the case. The positivity rate for today was at 4.1%, and over the last seven days, that average came in at 3.9%. For reference, back on September 23rd and 24th, that number was just at 2.7%. So quite a bit of an increase there. And for months, DeWine has created a daily list ranking counties in order of those with the most coronavirus cases per 100,000 people to the least. So he noted that these numbers are increasing dramatically each week. In fact, 51 out of Ohio's 88 counties meet the threshold of high incidence, which is just 100 cases per 100,000 people. What we can say is that things will get better, uh, but in all likelihood, they will get worse before they get better. But in an effort to spark optimism in Ohioans ahead of an uncertain future, DeWine chose to focus on what the state has already accomplished. Ohio has so far avoided a major spike that would overwhelm hospitals, like what was seen in Italy, California, New York, and other spots across the world. Despite the great tragedy, 500, or excuse me, 5,000 deaths. Um, many families were a parent, both parents are out of work. Uh, we've seen small businesses close. We've seen small businesses struggle. We've seen an increase in, in people with mental health problems. So this virus has certainly not been benign and we have not been spared. And the people of Ohio have not been spared. But because of what you've done, we've gotten to where we are today. And of course, nobody can predict the future, but the concern is that we are in for a tough winter as more people are stuck indoors, which will only increase the chance of spreading the virus. Of course, experts have been saying being outdoors is the best way to prevent spread, but that is less likely to happen as the temperatures drop. And DeWine said that how we come out of this really depends on what we do as a whole, on how quickly we get a vaccine and how well that vaccine works. And of course, most of us can't control when that vaccine is ready, but there are a few things that are within our power. What we do collectively is going to determine, frankly, what the next few months are going to be. Um, if we could get mass compliance up 85, 90% in this state, every county we would fundamentally change what the next few months um, will be like. And a bill that would allow cocktails to go from Ohio bars and restaurants permanently has been signed into law by DeWine today. His signature makes Ohio the second state in the country to make cocktails to go a permanent measure intended for economic relief in the hospitality business during this global pandemic. It allows third-party delivery of alcohol for those over the age of 21, along with the purchase of a meal. Customers can order up to three drinks to go with a food order. Drinks are to be sealed before sale and can't be consumed on the premises. It also allows retail permit holders to utilize more outside space on private or public property with approval from the local township or municipality while serving their customers. And with just 21 days until the election, Ohioans are going out to early vote in record numbers. In fact, so far they have tripled in early voting participation compared to this same time four years ago. 193,021 Ohioans voted early in the first week compared to just 64,312 in 2016. And unsurprisingly, absentee ballot requests increased by more than 316,000 with a total of nearly 2.5 million applications received statewide. That's more than double what had been requested at this point in 2016. Ohio ranks ahead of 43 other states and we're just one of 20 who allow voting on Saturday and one of five allowing voting on Sunday. So some cool things about Ohio as we continue on with this election. 
But let's look toward the Senate right now. Today was day two of hearings for President Donald Trump's nominee for Supreme Court Justice, Judge Amy Coney Barrett. The mood was a lot more confrontational than it was on day one. She was hit with 30 minute chunks of questioning by Democrats who have voiced strong opposition to her nomination. Senator Dianne Feinstein all but begged her to be specific about how she would handle big abortion cases like Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey, but Barrett held firm that she could not commit to any sort of approach before hearing the case. It would be comforting to you to have an answer, but I can't express views on cases or pre-commit um, to approaching a case any particular way. Republicans have been focused on defending the judge and her Catholic faith against criticism surrounding issues like abortion and same-sex marriage, and committee chairman Republican Lindsey Graham asked if she would be able to put her personal beliefs aside to adhere to the law. And she responded, I have done that. I will do that still. Republican-led Senate is pushing Barrett's nomination to a quick vote before the election on November 3rd and ahead of the latest challenge to the Obamacare Affordable Care Act. Trump says he wants a full nine-member court in place for any disputes that may pop up from the election, and Barrett testified that she hasn't talked to him or his team about that, saying it would be a gross violation of judicial independence. But when pushed by Democrats, she declined to commit to recusing herself from post-election cases. But like I said yesterday, unless something major happens, Republicans seem to have the votes to push her through for a lifetime appointment on the bench. And that would make her the third Supreme Court justice appointed by President Donald Trump. An initial committee vote is set for Thursday, which is the last day of hearings, which would then allow for final approval by the panel one week after, and a vote for confirmation by the full Senate on October 26th. So of course, we will keep you updated on all of that as it develops. But let's look locally. Right now, one of Toledo's own was honored today and will be remembered beyond the city for years to come. The late officer Anthony Adia was recognized by the American Police Hall of Fame with a Medal of Honor plaque, which was presented to his wife, Jamie Dia. Officer Dia's name, rank, departmental affiliation, city and state will be etched into the marble walls of the Hall of Fame's memorial. Jamie and Toledo Police Chief George Crawl were also given a certificate from the International Conference of Police Chaplains acknowledging Officer Dia's sacrifice after he was killed in the line of duty back on the 4th of July. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, feel free to like that like button and subscribe to our channel. I'm Jensen and now you are in the loop.